inside the body of a multicellular organism a steady state need to be maintained which means that amount of water needs to be regulated inside the body the body temperature should be fixed the ph of the fluids present inside the body should also be maintained so that the enzymes can function properly so maintaining this steady state inside the body is called as homeostasis and homeostasis is done by the process of excretion first we will see how homeostasis is done with the help of these two three examples first let's take the example of body temperature we know that the body temperature of humans is fixed at 37 degrees celsius if the temperature goes below 37 degrees celsius the enzymes in the body will not function properly they become deactivated and if the temperature becomes higher than 37 degrees celsius these temp these enzymes get destroyed so maintaining temperature at 37 is very very important for the life of an organism now let's see how this homeostasis is maintained regarding this temperature if temperature goes higher than 37 message reaches the brain which orders the sweat glands to secrete the sweat when this sweat evaporates from the surface of the body it causes cooling as a result the temperature falls back to 37 degree celsius so this is homeostasis let's see another example if the glucose level inside the blood rises then beta cells in pancreas they secrete hormone insulin and insulin converts extra glucose into glycogen and stores it inside the liver as a result inside the blood glucose level is maintained this is called as homeostasis and the normal glucose level should be 90 mg per 100 ml of blood if the glucose level inside the blood falls then alpha cells of pancreas they secrete another hormone called as glucagon and glucagon converts glycogen that was stored inside the liver back into glucose and sends it to the blood to normalize the blood sugar level again so this homeostasis is very important because if the sugar level or glucose level in blood is higher then diabetes is caused if the glucose level in blood is very low then it can take the person to a coma state also so maintaining homeostasis is extremely important so basically homeostasis perform two main functions first is excretion in which nitrogenous waste products produced in the body is removed from the body and second is osmoregulation in which amount of water and the ionic balance and the ph balance etc is maintained inside the body homeostasis is very very important as it helps to remove unwanted by products that hinder in the chemical equilibria of the reactions taking place inside the body it also removes toxic substances that can damage cell or the enzymes it regulates the ionic concentration maintains the ph level and regulate the body temperature so it keeps a steady state inside our body with the help of excretion homeostasis is maintained inside the body excretion is a biological process in which organisms get rid of the toxic nitrogenous waste product of metabolism and in different organisms different organs are used for this process excretion in amoeba is done with the help of cell membrane earthworms use nephridia insects use special structures called as malpighian tubules in mollusks and vertebrates excretion is done with the help of kidneys in humans also there is a pair of kidneys along with certain other parts which form a complex urinary system now the waste product is the nitrogenous waste and it is produced in the simplest form called as ammonia but ammonia is a toxic substance fishes release ammonia as such which dissolves in water and reduces its toxicity while other organisms first convert ammonia either into uric acid or into urea before releasing it into the air amphibians can release as ammonia urea or uric acid birds and reptiles they excrete in the form of uric acid which is a solid waste while mammals excrete urea dissolved in water in the form of liquid urine converting ammonia into uric acid consumes more energy than converting ammonia into urea now we will see parts of excretory or urinary system in urinary system a pair of kidneys are present notice that left kidney is placed slightly higher than the right kidney as liver is present above the right kidney there are pair of ureters 
a sac like structure called as urinary bladder and urethra apart from that there are two blood vessels aorta and vena cava first we will start with a pair of kidneys kidneys lie in the lower abdomen towards the back side they are purplish brown and bean shaped now we can broadly divide kidneys into two part outer part is darker in color and it is called as cortex while inner part which is lighter it is called as medulla in inside each kidney there are large number of minute tubules which are called as uriniferous tubules or renal tubules or they can also be called as kidney tubules or nephrons the removal of waste product urea is done with the help of nephron so we say that nephron is a structural and functional unit of kidney and inside each kidney approximately 1 million nephrons are present functions of kidneys include removing waste products of metabolism like urea amino acids creatinine etc amino acids are the simplest form of proteins if they are in excess they are removed from the body osmoregulation that is regulating the amount of water and ions regulating the blood ph regulating the volume of blood it also converts in active form of vitamin d to active form so every day kidneys filter about 190 liter of blood and produce 0.9 to 1.9 liter of urine apart from that other parts of urinary system are a pair of ureters which are thin tubes this sac like structure called as urinary bladder so ureters are about 25 to 30 cm long and their function is to bring urine from the kidneys into the urinary bladder urinary bladder is a sac like structure which has muscular contractile walls when it is completely full the walls contract and urine is expelled out the process is called as micturition urine is expelled out through urethra which is a narrow tube about 2 cm long in women while 20 cm long in men at the end of urethra there are urethral sphincter muscles are present and when they relax and the walls of urinary bladder contract the urine is expelled out now we need to answer this question how is excretion different from ejection you can pause the video for some time so that you can think about this answer now in excretion metabolic waste which is the nitrogenous waste is removed out of the body through urethra with the help of urinary system and during ejection undigested food that we have eaten and which is not needed inside the body it is removed from the body through anus with the help of digestive system 